This plane is the Super Canard. Look at the design on this guy. Two sets of wings. You got a forward wing, you got a rear wing here. By angling the forward wing at a slightly higher angle of incidence than the main wing, that is just tilting it up a little bit. You can see the bends right there in that forward wing. I'm tilting it up just a little bit with these upward bends. Two things cause a stall, too high an angle of incidence or too slow of a speed. Now, obviously if the plane's flying too slow, you just don't develop enough airflow that will have the coanda effect to stick to the surface of the wing. It's just going so slow that the airflow just kind of fails to form over the wing. No lift, plane falls out of the sky. The other thing is that if you're angling too far upward with this wing here, eventually it can't follow around the shape of the wing. The airflow becomes disconnected. And again, we call that a stall. The airflow, you need airflow trailing off the back of the plane to shove the plane up to make lift. So those are the two ways that your plane can lose lift. Uh, with a stall too slow or too high an angle of incidence. So what we do with this plane is really kind of clever. We angle this little wing a little bit higher angle of incidence than the main wing. So when it gets close to stalling, the little wing will stall first, drop the nose down, and the main wing keeps flying. So it's a stall resistant paper airplane. One of the really cool features of this plane is that it starts with a modified version of a classic paper airplane base called a water bomb base. I wanna show you that base, and then I'll walk you through the folding of the super canard here, but the water bomb base idea, very powerful. You can make all kinds of planes with the water bomb base. You can make this starfighter design, starts with a water bomb base, this really cool double-decker plane. It's called the uh, interlock biplane. It starts with a modified water bomb base, water bomb base idea, the twin jet, Starts with a water bomb base, straight up water bomb base, no modified water bomb base. That's a straight water bomb base idea. And this guy starts with a slightly modified water bomb base. What the heck is a water bomb base? I've said it so many times, you must be going crazy. Okay, so we're going to start by making diagonal folds, taking the top and putting it against the side. First, this way. And again, I like to hold down the corner, pivot those edges together, and then sweep. Make a nice clean fold, unfold that. I'm going a little bit fast. Don't feel like you gotta follow along on this uh, necessarily. I just wanna show you the mechanics of this thing. And I'm lining up this corner, lining up that edge, sweeping down, nice sharp creases. Now we've got what you would call valley folds because they look like valleys when viewed from above. Let's flip our valleys over so that they're mountains. Both of my diagonal folds are now mountains. I'm gonna fold right across the center of that X and carefully line up the ends of the creases. And then when I, I'm gonna walk slowly up here, find the center, sweep that direction, sweep that direction, make a nice sharp crease there. And then I'm gonna open this up and I'm gonna stand it up so that this fold that we just created is now a mountain fold. I'm gonna flip it around so the short side is on top. The X is now on the top of the page again. So we were, we were here and I'm really flipping it over and just opening it up a little bit and making a little tunnel. You can see I can, I can go right under there. Now, very few things happen fast in origami, and this is one of the cool, fast-happening things. With just three creases, we're going to make one of the all-time best bases for creating paper airplanes. And we're going to do it just like this. I'm going to take one finger and press down right where all those creases meet, very gently, just until the paper pops. You can see it pop, change directions there. And then I'm gonna bring the top down and let the sides come in. And that is a water bomb base. Let's tighten in just a little bit. So you fill the screen. Now look at what you've got here for making a paper airplane. You've got these two corners here. You can turn into tunnels in the front of the plane like I did with the, with the twin jet. So you've got a delta shape happening here, which gives you less lift up front. There's a ton of layers. You've got four good solid layers up front. And so along with having a delta shape and multiple layers moving toward the front of the plane, you're off, you're off to a great running start for developing paper airplanes. This is the super canard. And to start folding this guy, we'll need one sheet of eight and a half by 11 paper. I prefer 20 pound paper the first time through a project like this. A lot of serious folding. So let's get going. Let's spin it. We have the long side on top and we're gonna fold it in half. Carefully line up the corners. And as usual, when we're folding in half, line the corners up, start in the middle, sweep to the outside. Just like that, nice sharp crease. Now, we're gonna fold one third of the paper over, and the way you measure that, we're just gonna eyeball this. The layered part here 
is going to be the same size as the unlayered part here. So get it close, line it up, make sure your layers are staying together up here. Don't let the layers go drifting around. Keep those corners together as you bring it over. And this part is going to be about the same size as that part. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Just get it as close as you can, eyeballing. Make a nice sharp crease. I'm going to spin it around now so that the open part is toward me. And we're going to do a series of what are called squash folds. And the only mistake you can make with a squash fold is actually trying to do it too fast. So let's see what's going on with a squash fold here first. So we're going to open this up, lift this up. So it's pointed right straight up at us. And we're going to open the bottom two layers here. Put your finger all the way in there so it gets all the way to the top. So this whole thing is starting to squeeze down. And we're going to move the top down, taking care to line up the center crease with the center layer here. So this center crease is gonna line up with this center layer right here. I mean, I'm, I'm gonna move the crease just to the left side of this center layer, just to give me a little room uh, to manipulate here. And I do that a lot, just a little, it's a little tiny bit of a cheat, just to make sure I've got room to manipulate layers. Not really a cheat, it's just the proper way to fold. <laughs> so that's a squash fold, we've taken this flap, and it was sticking up like that, and we're squashing it, reaching inside, starting to move the layers to the outside, and moving it down and squashing it flat like that. Now, we're going to do the same thing to the back side here. Uh, and so let's flip it over. And we're going to lift this layer up. And again, we're going to open up the, the open layers here. Put your finger all the way in there so it starts to open up. Now, at this point, you can't see the layers underneath, right? You're, you're kind of, it's, you, you're blocking. So once you get it going the correct direction, pro tip here, flip it over. Now you can control these two layers on top, move them down so that they line up with that center crease. We're going to complete the squash from the opposite side you would normally complete a squash fold from, but you're going to make a much more accurate crease. I worked up to the top, sweeping down to the bottom. And now you can see you've got a water bomb-like base. And we're not done with squash folds. Each one of these flaps, one, two, three, four, it's going to get squash folded. So let's get going on that. Move that one to the, move the right-hand flap to the left. I'm going to press down and carefully line up this crease with the center crease here. Squash fold there. Okay, so open this up a little bit more. Sometimes it's convenient to use a pen to reach up in there. If you got a pen handy, that's a good thing to do. I'm just going to reach up in there with my finger and open that up a little bit more. Press that down. I want the squash to go neatly all the way to the top. So again, the only mistake you can really make with a squash fold is doing it too fast before everything is lined up. Get my crease just lined up with the center crease perfectly. There, I've got it squashed. Control the layers. And now I'm just going to move this top flap back to the left. And now we're going to squash this side. So I'm lifting that up, opening it up, carefully positioning that crease so that the squash so it ends right up here at the top point. And then I'm going to line up the crease that I'm flattening here right with the center line, carefully lining it up with the center line, and then sweeping to the outside of the squash to complete the squash. So you are squashing it down, but really, you got to be a little more careful than just bleh. you're gonna nudge it in there coax it into coming up correctly there so i was squashed here i'm taking that top layer back to the left now i got this sort of upside down ice cream cone or upside down kite shape here and now we're going to squash these guys out here so it's easier to flip it back over to squash those layers let's flip it over you're going to lift up one layer the right hand side and press down you can start to see the layer opening right here this is what we're going to squash right there. Pressing down. And I'm lining up the crease with this edge right here this time. This edge down here. So this long crease is lining up with just that, that edge right there. So again, carefully working my way up to the top point so it comes out. And then lining up the crease. And then pressing these flat. So now we're going to move this top layer back to the right, and we're going to squash this one right here. So let's lift it up, 
can see that's where we're we're going to squash right in there those layers again gently coaxing that top of the squash up there so it meets the point carefully lining up the center crease on this flap with the main center crease of the plane and looking good now a double check always this this came out really nice and neat down here these corners lined up really super nice that's going to be the rear uh, corners of the plane so we're off to a good start if that's a little bit off you can kind of fudge your squash folds to match but if you've taken care to line up these creases with the center line on each side it should be okay so again i've squashed it now i'm moving that top flap back and we've got oh boy you can start to see it's getting complicated. <laughs> Look at all that. That's just amazing. So the next move we're gonna do is a complex move called a pedal fold. And we're gonna start our pedal fold by taking these two little raw edges here just to the center. So we're working with the top flap here. Raw edges go to the center. Oop, I missed a little bit there. Can you see? I missed just a little bit down there. I'm gonna straighten that right there and just pull it up until I can straighten it. And I'm going to do this side just in there. We're getting ready to do a pedal fold. So we've got the two preliminary moves done for the pedal fold. What we're going to do now is open up those two moves. And to make a pedal fold, we're going to need to do three more creases on the inside here. So a new crease is going to go at the end, right straight across at the end of these two creases we made in preparation. And then you're going to make two creases that go here. So we're going to actually make a little triangle inside there. But it's actually easier than you think. So what we're going to do is lift this top layer, just the top layer here of this big triangle. We're lifting it up and we're going to use as the limit these little creases that we made here. So the, the limit is going to be this corner right here and this corner right here. That's going to be the limit. So we're going to lift up this layer and we're going to start to form this crease that goes straight across between the ends of those two creases. And we're just going to bend it right there for now. We're not going to definitely make a crease. So bend it right there where this these two creases meet, this crease underneath and the crease on top. So that's going to be a pivot point. So we're going to follow the crease on the bottom on both sides. So we've got the crease on the both sides on the bottom uh, going up. And now we're going to bend this up, keep moving it up until we bring together these two sides until they meet right here at this center crease. We're using this center crease uh, as a way, this center crease right here, you can see right there, the center crease, we're using that as a way to line up the sides that we're moving to the inside here. So we're just kind of wrapping this around using the center crease as where the point of this is gonna come out. And now we wanna start definitely making the creases in here from the center point down to the corners here. You can kind of give it a little more attention by pressing right there. And you can still see we haven't made our crease across here, but now we're gonna do that. We're gonna lift that up and make the crease right there. Now that is the completed pedal fold. And now that I've got it done, <laughs> it looks so easy, but here's where we started. We started here, we were like this, we folded this in, we folded this in, and now you can see where the new creases are gonna go. This is a valley fold, these two are mountains, and we start by lifting that up, following these creases on the bottom. Those are going right where we want them to go. Follow those on the bottom, and that'll pull the layers to the inside, and then you work that up into a point here, and then the last move is to push that point and flatten it out. And once you got this fancy schmancy thing all done, <laughs> now the evil really starts. Okay, we're gonna pull this apart and we're gonna grab onto these two legs and pull out, kind of like you, you see my thumbs kind of going under as I'm pulling out. And then that crease should, if you can pull enough, it'll pop like that. And then you just push it in there. And using the same creases, um, no new creases there, just using the same creases, it'll go up and inside. Crazy, crazy, crazy. But that's not as crazy as it's going to get. <laughs> we're about to get even crazier. Now we're going to start making these canards. You can see how these guys are sweeping out. So we're going to lift these points up and sweep them out, and then we're going to narrow them eventually. So the first trick is to make sure that you know where the point is underneath there. It's kind of the Braille method. That little point underneath that we made go up we're gonna use as a limit for how much we're gonna lift this up. 
So this guy is going to start to get reversed. We're going to change the direction of this crease right here. We're going to pop that out and change the direction of that crease. And we're going to lift it up, but we're going to use that point inside as the limit for how high that goes. So our little point is right here, inside here. You can kind of feel it. This layer is going to get reversed. That crease gets reversed, and we're going to lift it just where that to where the point ends there. You'll be able to feel it pretty definitely. Now the tricky thing is to to squash this whole flat this whole thing flat because it's just bulging up in the air, doing nothing definite here. So we're now we're going to have to start shaping it. We've got this crease going right where it needs to go. So from the back side, from the under layers, let's work our way from the bottom to the top. So what's going to happen at the bottom layer? is we're gonna make a crease that goes from up in there out to this point here. So let's do that. So way up there where this point is buried underneath, we're gonna go make a crease that goes from that point down to this corner right here. So this is the back side of that flap that we reverse the direction of the main crease on. We're just gonna make a crease that goes there. And now we're gonna follow this crease here, pressing that down. And you'll see that there's some slack happening right here. And so to make the top layer crease, we're just going to press this down, try to line up the crease with the, the bottom layer crease. This is a really hard move, by the way, very complex. So take your time. You'll need to watch this a couple of times to probably get it. Uh, that's okay. So now it looks like that. Now we do the same thing to the other side. Again, the first move is reversing the direction of this crease right here. So we're going to pop it up. And we're going to let it reverse all the way up to where the other one ends. Just make sure it's in a matching point there. Start moving it over so that we can make the bottom layer crease here. Again, it's going up inside there, all the way down to this corner here. That's the first part of this assembly. And now we're going to start pressing it flat by using this long crease that we reversed. Press it down. You have to press inside there. You can see this little triangle form right there. Right there. These little triangles should be about the same size on each side. You zoom in, you'll see those little triangles a little more definitely. Those little guys form as a result of the too much slack here. So we've created this, what's going to be the forward canard of the plane right there. So this started down like this. We lift this up, reversing that fold. And then we make this crease and then press this and press the top triangle back down, which forms this little triangle right there. And of course you do that on both sides. We're not done. As you can see, the canard is a little bit thinner than the flap we've got there. So now we've got to start narrowing that flap. So step one on doing that is to take this edge right here, this raw edge here. We're gonna lift this whole flap up and over and line it up with the right-hand side there, this long crease that we just made. Put that one there. We're going to do the same thing on this side. This raw edge goes against this new crease that we just made right there. Okay, so this is another difficult fold. If you can make it past this, you're going all the way. I know these were hard. This is even weirder. This is a little weirder, so hang in there. This is where all the magic starts to happen right here. Okay, we're going to unfold this. Lifting the top layer and using the end of that crease that we just made as a reference well, you can hold that down with your thumbnail. You're going to lift the top layer, top layer only. And we're going to make a crease that goes from right here, where this little reference crease ended, all the way out to this corner right here. So top layer only, making the crease going out to that corner. You can run your finger down inside, right to the uh, corner of that pocket. There's one layer done. Now we're going to lift the layer that we left behind. Swing this back down, lift both of those layers together, and you can see this guy starting to pop. You're pulling that upward. So this layer here is going to get pulled upward. We're going to make a new crease that goes up this way on this layer right here. So those two guys, lift those together. You can see this is pulling up, pulling up, pulling up. So start to form a crease that goes from right here all the way down to this corner right here. So let's just push that over and make that crease. Make sure this is staying in the right position, making that crease, and then you'll make a new crease up here as that comes together. Now, I missed a little bit. You can see that I missed just a little bit right here. 
I'm just a little below that mark. That's okay, don't worry about that. Uh, just try to get it in the same spot for this side. It's not critical, uh, but if you miss a little bit, it's way more important to get this whole assembly kind of looking like this. And this corner ends up being kind of important for the looks of the plane later. So now that you've got that going, we're just gonna lift this up and tuck that underneath. And there we go, you can kind of see that. Now that canard is really starting to form there. So let's do the same thing to this side. We're gonna unfold that. We're gonna use our thumbnail as a limit there. And I'm gonna cheat it down just so it ends up in the same place as my other fold. There we go. Now those corners are matching. <laughs> it, you'll never see the error. <laughs> okay, I'm folding out to the outside edge there, the outside corner that is making that crease, trying to get it to line up with the mistake that I made before. <laughs> okay, there's the under layer done. Now I'm gonna swing that back down and lift both of those at the same time, which is gonna cause this layer to start pulling up. So lay that flat, continue to pull that layer up and make the new crease from this corner right here, all the way down to this corner right here, rolling that over, getting that corner in place, flattening it, and flattening this part right up here. So I didn't, it wasn't perfect. It's a little bit off, but you know what? I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna sweat that. That's a, that's, it looks like a giant error right here, right now. Um, but you know what? It's not gonna affect the plane flight. That's one where we're just gonna go, that's between you and I. We're not gonna tell anybody about that one. We got a little bit of a mistake right there. Uh, we're gonna straighten it up on the next move that we're gonna do here. This is where this is how we're gonna hide that one. <laughs> so now we're gonna um, start to move these flaps back to the outside. And I'm gonna fold this over, I'm gonna lift this top flap, I'm gonna fold this over just right at that corner. So it's gonna go from this corner all the way down to this corner. I'm moving this flap back to the outside. go. I'm going to do the same thing on this side, the corner from this, only I'm not going to go to that corner. I'm going to go right here where this guy ends right here. Okay, so moving that back out. I'm going to go just short. This is where I'm going to level this guy up right here, just short and right there where that one matches. And then I'm going to go down to this corner. And that, my friend, is how you hide a tiny folding error. <laughs> Those corners came out in the right place. And that's, oh, I, got, I let that layer slip just a little bit of a, as I was playing games there. So I'm gonna remake that, holding that in place. Okay, there we go. That's better. Now that's laying flat. We're gonna do a little reverse fold move here because it'll lock together and hold together a little bit more nicely if I, instead of just leaving that loose like that, I'm gonna tuck this under a little bit so I've got two layers kind of compressing it together. So a reverse fold, works like this. We're gonna unfold that. We're gonna follow the bottom layer and reverse this top layer here. So this edge is gonna end up going the different direction. That's why it's called a reverse fold. We're actually gonna reverse this big crease here. We're gonna recrease this a little bit right here, but that's not the reversing part. This is the reversing part. I'm flattening that, following the bottom layer, pushing that big crease to the, all the way up inside there, and I've reversed it. So it was down here like this, and kind of like closing a milk carton, I'm pushing that in, following this bottom layer is gonna go the same direction it's going, and this top layer, you can see it was like that, and then it's gonna turn into a mountain fold. As I push this layer in and reverse that, that crease there, this turns into a mountain fold. Okay, that's one side done. We're, no new creases here, we're just manipulating the old creases, so I'm gonna make this reverse fold here, I'm just gonna reverse this little part. I'm lifting this up, pressing this crease that's going to reverse. I'm pressing it flat, pressing it to the inside, and it goes swings out like that. So now all we have to do is a little bit of shaping. What we're going to start with is folding the plane in half right down the center line. Let's flip it over so the relatively smooth side is up. We're going to rotate it so the nose is pointed left. And then right down the old pipeline here, just following the existing crease. Now, when you're making the wing crease, the cool thing here about this plane is that you can see this old style dart. The classic dart is kind of in the heart of this thing and then it's populated by all this other high-tech stuff. But to get the old school dart look, we're gonna use this edge and bring it right down to the center crease that we just made. Really easy to do at the nose. You have uh, tons of room to line up right here at the nose. And so you'll 
get that going that direction and then bring it down and you have to play a little bit of peekaboo here with that center crease you can see it pretty easily right there i'm going to move in a little bit you can see it even better here you can see it right here you're going to line up right there and then just do the best you can as it goes back toward the rear of the plane so get it going the right direction kind of start pressing it and then go ahead and start creasing it sweeping left sweeping right and that's looking pretty good let's flip it over we'll make the other wing match of course so now the important thing is you've got these two rear corners on every paper airplane that's what you want to pay attention to those two rear corners this and this and of course we're going to use our lineup right here again let's get the nose going I'm just going to bend it over we're not really going to make a fine crease here yet we're just going to bend it into position and then continue to bend this over now you're going to carefully line up these rear corners and start making a bend in there before you make a real crease get it lined up start to press a little bit harder and then we're going to sweep toward the back of the plane make sure those corners are staying lined up as you sweep toward the back of the plane i got a little bit of air going there there we go back on track sweep to the back of the plane and then start sweeping to the front of the plane get that locked down in position now your canards could be a little bit off here you can see it's not perfect uh, but that's okay uh, what you're going to do to level this thing up, to even this up, is you're going to make a crease for these winglets. Now, look at the way the crease goes right down the winglet so that it stays in a straight line right here. That's what you're looking for. And you're looking for it to be parallel with the main wing crease and in a straight line right there. So if you look at it right down the barrel here, you can see those. that's one straight line right down the winglets. That's what you're shooting for. So let's start with the rear winglet. And we're going to use this corner right here as kind of a reference. And you can see the angle that we're aiming for right here. Let's move that up a little bit. That looks pretty good. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and make that. That looks pretty tight, pretty correct. And we're going to make this. We're just going to continue on just like we're making one solid crease up there. We're just going to continue this line right through here. And we'll do the best we can to line this up and make it even. That's giving me a little bit of trouble right there. So I'm going to back up and take one more run at it here. That looks pretty good. Okay. So that came up pretty straight. Let's get a straight line between those creases right there. That's looking good. And no matter how straight it came out, when we do the other side, we're going to make these uh, layers match. And so the key thing here, when we flip it over to do the other side, start you know paying attention more to that bottom layer. You, you do want it to be parallel here, but really what you're doing is you want to make this wing match the other wing. So roll it, carefully roll it over until you can just line up with the edge below. So what you're doing is just, just carefully rolling over and double checking underneath there that you're lining it up right on top of that other edge. And then as a last check, just take a look at this, this edge here. So that all looks pretty good. Lining up that edge, that comes out pretty parallel. And what we're going to do here is now do the same thing with the front winglet. Just get that going. Looks like we're pretty close in line with this. Okay, looking good. Winglets are done. They're folded anyway. <laughs> now it's all about the adjusting and there's some really delicious adjusting with regard to this plane. So the first thing we're going to do, unlike most uh, great paper airplanes, not a lot of dihedral angle here. We're going to set the wings fairly flat because these winglets are going to add what's called effective dihedral. They're going to cause the wingtip vortices to shed really cleanly and they're going to really help the plane resist uh, rolling left or rolling right. And as long as these are straight up and down, what you've got here is effective dihedral from these upward swept wingtips uh, both ways. It also gives it really good structural integrity all the way down the length of the plane. Um, and then what this plane is known for is being stall resistant. And to add the stall resistance, what we're going to do is increase the angle of incidence, that is the amount of tilt on this forward wing. Now, stalls are caused by two things. If the plane is flying too slowly, the airflow just can't follow the shape of the wing. So the Coanda effect doesn't have a chance to have its way to follow the surface of the wing. So 
If too slow a flight is happening, the airflow comes unglued, that's called a stall. And if the plane is tilted up too much with regard to the airflow, if it's just trying to, to angle up and fly like that too much, the airflow is going like this, the airflow can't easily follow the shape of the wing, and so the airflow comes unglued, and no more downward uh, uh, vectoring off the trailing edge of the plane, and therefore no more lift. You, it's a loss of lift. So stall is really just a loss of lift, a loss of laminar flow over the wing, and it's not making any more lift, and the, we call that a stall. So what we're doing here is intentionally making the little wing stall by adding more angle of incidence here, tilting that upward more. So when the plane, the whole plane is close to stall phase, because this little wing is tilted up a little bit more, it's gonna stall first, that'll drop the nose down, which now causes the plane to pick up speed and reduces the angle of incidence on the main wing here so that it never gets to stall phase. So it's a really tricky little design. Um, you've got a little bit of upward sweep here on the canard. And then what we're gonna do, of course, because it is a glider, uh, in an engineless plane, we're going to add some up elevator right back here, right there. That is a really great looking plane. I'll pull back out just a little bit, give myself a little bit of room there to swing this guy around. We show you every angle of this guy. Look at that. What a gorgeous looking plane. You can see that old style dart front to back there. Really cool. Forward canard making it stall resistant. And then that that nice broad rear wing there. Gorgeous plane, will fly pretty good distance, but here's the issue with this guy. Look at all of these layers under here. That's really gonna cause a lot of drag underneath the plane. All, all the airflow does is get tripped up on all those little layers everywhere. And so it's slowing it down. That's a, a drag inducing thing, all those layers. Even all these layers right here at the nose, see all that thickness happening right there. It's just not quite as clean as it needs to be to get a world record going, but <laughs> what a fantastic looking plane, the Super Canard.